everybody. I'm back with another video and this one's on Jenkins. We will create a very basic Jenkins pipeline uh, and we'll do it using Blue Ocean and we can see how Blue Ocean creates Jenkins file by itself as well as um, we'll try and update the Jenkins file to see how it automatically triggers these jobs. Um, this one's going to be a very basic one so I'm going to leave it just to be able to print something with a couple of branches so you can see how the flow goes. So without further ado, let's get started. On the left hand side here, I've got a IDE. I'm using Atom for the purpose of this recording. And on the right hand side, you can see that I've got a Jenkins um, server logged in. I'm using the CloudBees Jenkins version. And I've got a Git repository. This repository and this version of Jenkins, the road running on a Docker container and I got this from the official CloudBees training material that you use to learn. So having a quicker look, this is a repository that we'll be working with. And I've got a Jenkins folder and this has got a build.sh which basically builds the software, it does a git clean, print the environment variables and uh, does a, a maven clean package. Uh, you can see that this repository doesn't have a Jenkins file yet. So I'm going to just switch back to Jenkins and go back to Blue Ocean. As soon as I went into Jenkins um, Blue Ocean, it, it, the, the first prompt is create a new pipeline. The reason why that's happening is because there is no jobs in here at the moment. Um, so, uh, But it could be very confusing with the terminology. A job is still a pipeline. So in Blue Ocean, the terminology is pipeline for jobs. Um, and Blue Ocean takes Jenkins jobs or pipelines to a whole new level. So the first thing we have to do is connect. Um, we're going to create new pipeline and connect this um, Git repository. This is Git server running on localhost. I forgot to mention. And also Jenkins running on localhost. Um, so we don't have Bitbucket or GitHub. So we'll just pick Git, uh, which is what Git EA is based on. And let's go SSH. We'll be using SSH to connect. We don't have a key yet, so I'll show you how to do that as well. I'm just going to put in the repository and automatically Jenkins should be giving you a SSH key. Now this is not going to work unless you come here and go into settings of the repository. Uh, you could do it at the project level as well, but I'm just going to do it here. Uh, deploy keys, and I'm going to create a new deploy key. Titles um, pipeline, so I know what it is when I look at it. That's just um, enable write access. That's fine. Uh, deploy key. Okay, so now I should be able to just go in and create a pipeline, and it'll test the connection. So it got us to this screen. Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but there was a little message down the bottom here which said there is no Jenkins file. And okay, we're here on the Jenkins pipeline creation screen. And I don't know if you noticed, but there was down the bottom here, there was a little message that said the Jenkins file wasn't found. Go create a plus sign. And I just want to print a. Uh, yeah, that's the step and stage. I want to call it print message print message let's say hello world and we should just be able to save it and now this says com commit to which branch so I'm just going to say added new Jenkins file and I'm going to commit to master see what happens as soon as I do that if once I so it's adding you can see the progress bar at the top there um, just gonna go back in and refresh so see added new Jenkins file and there is a new file here and that should have a little bit of code which we're gonna copy and paste here because this is what we'll be modifying uh, in the text editor and this should have already run so okay so it created a new file alright so that's ran one build so you can see here and if I go in there'll be a step a 
that says hello world. This checkout from version control is implicit because um, that's how this is linked. So every time it's going to check out the next version and automatically detect changes to the Jenkins file and run the build. That's how Jenkins Blue Ocean oh, set up the, the pipeline. So if you want to have a look at the job, you could go in to the normal Jenkins Classic GUI and you can see that it's created a multi multi branch pipeline so branch sources these are all the sources this is how it detects all the branches and it's got Jenkins file for build configuration it discards old builds and it's got some other steps that are not set up at the moment so I think that's how it's work it's working so I'm gonna get rid of this and go back to my message now um, going forward what we'll be doing is we'll be just going into git and updating the code here and we'll be writing up stuff from here so if I were to add a step and I'm gonna run a shell command which does host name and I'm gonna copy that and go into edit mode and then just paste it in here and I'm gonna come it to added host name host name step instead of print host name because that I that I didn't change so let's just commit I'm gonna update this one here just copy that and update it here and if I go into Jenkins, magically, it's going to run another build. Because I changed the file. See, there's a build number two. And the change that it detected was print hostname. Because that's the name of the stage. Uh, just there, right there. Line number four. And it, it just printed the hostname. So it's printing the hostname of the node where it's running. So we'll have a look at how we can how we how we can change that in the future because I'll be printing something um, when I run parallel steps so that's very simply how blue ocean ties into this whole whole setup so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Jenkins file I'm just gonna go pause the video make some changes to the Jenkins file and then I'm gonna come back and explain Alright, so I just typed this in. Um, I can change the color coding to Jenkins file. Okay, so I don't have it. That's fine. Um, so I've got. So what I've done is we had agent any. I've changed that to none, so I don't want to use any agent. But what I want to do in each stage is uh, notice that the agent is at the same level as stages. So that's stages, and then I'm saying I want to run parallel stages. And that's where the parallel stages end. Let's say end parallel, right? And then in stage, I've got. I'm saying um, I wanted to run two builds, so I'm running the build.sh script that we were talking about. And I want to run it. Uh, that's the name of the stage. I want to run it on JDK seven. So this is how you declare a agent. Uh, you can use double quotes as well, it doesn't matter. And I'm declaring an environment variable, calling it node name, and I'm setting that to JDK 7 here and JDK 8 here. And I'm running this stage on JDK 8, as you can see. And then the steps, um, I'm sure you can figure that out. So this one, again, running on a different agent, setting up a different, um, sorry, same variable name, but, uh, but uh, with a different value. And I'm printing that here and here. So uh, there we go. So there's no errors. So if I copy this and put it into, I'm just going to refresh this up here so you can see when it's running. Edit this and just replace with what we currently have. I have questions about this. I don't know if that's going to work. But let's see. Added parallel steps. To yeah, the parallel steps to build 
one, two nodes. And before I save, I gotta show you. Um, so if I go here, so I've got two nodes. You can see JDK seven node and JDK eight node. So if I click on this, the name of the node is JDK seven. That's not the label, so we gotta fix the label. So JDK seven node and JDK eight node node. Good, I checked because I hadn't checked it before. So if I just save it now and go back to this window here, um, if this fails, we'll troubleshoot. Waiting, it's probably failed. Yep, it did. So that's fine. Okay, groovy character. All right, fingers crossed. Let's go back. Failed again. And this time it's failed because of the parallel. Okay, so I know what I did. So let's try and fix that. Uh, and we probably have to move all of this. So it's par that's the end of parallel, so that's fine. And grab all of that and put it in here. Right, so that should work. That's the stage. Indent all of this to one more level. I'm just gonna go update it here. The stage. <laughs> go back in. Alright, so I fixed the comment character and so that's fixed. So if you look at my comments, now you can see that there's two parallel stages running in parallel. So if I select one of these, they're going to print the um, node name and then we can have a look at where they have run. The other interesting thing is you can just expand and it will connect to the uh, to the log and follow it and then show you what's going on. Uh, what it's doing it's downloading a whole bunch of stuff on Maven Central because this is the first time the build is running on both of these nodes. So this is going to take a moment. Um, so just to do a quick recap what we've done here is uh, pipeline is where the execution starts for simple declarative pipeline and uh, we're saying here don't pick any agent and we put the stages clause and then we added a new stage and within that stage we added a parallel stage option and then we got two others we've got one stage that does uh, the build on JDK 8 node and then the other stage that builds on JDK 7 or vice versa sorry I mixed that up so once this finishes if I go back up if I can click fast enough uh, you can see it's still running so um, it's running in parallel on both the both the nodes so if I follow the the log for this one because you, you know the second circle was there and this will f also follow logs so it's downloading on both the docker containers it's downloading the maven uh, dependencies before the build can happen so I'll show you one other thing while we're waiting on this yeah, so you gotta be quick so there and if I go here Uh, see this is a multi-branch pipeline and both nodes have one one job each running at the moment 
and if I go here it shows you a nice um, progress like this the old school progress uh, you can see build on JDK 8 and build on JDK 7 are two separate stages but it also shows parallel stage which is the over overarching stage so you can see here this is parallel stages is here and the two JDK stages are here so this is a little bit misrepresenting but if you want to have a clear view uh, that that's succeeded it's taken pretty much similar times so if I go back and we see where the job has run the other thing with um, Blue Ocean is you have to refresh the page because it doesn't have the updated information so as you can see it was showing that the pipeline is still running when it's finished um, so here if you look at the node name it's JDK 8 and I've got the thing selected here if I switch that to JDK 7 and expand it ran this on JDK 7 right and you can see it's very clear um, and the build build steps are similar on both both the nodes so if I go down to the bottom there should be build succeeded and yeah every time you make a change you don't have to run the run the Jenkins pipeline it'll automatically pick up any changes to any of the branches at the moment that's how the multi-branch pipeline that Jenkins created when we added the Jenkins file using the Blue Ocean uh, GUI. Um, we'll be doing a little more, so a few more exercises, but I think uh, this is it for now. Um, this has been a long video, so I'll end this here. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me in comments. Thank you very much for spending the time. Uh, you can like and subscribe the video if you like, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.